Jason here. Welcome back to my fish room. So first off, I just want to say thank you to all my subscribers out there. I reached a bit of a little milestone the other day with 100 subs, so I'm really thrilled about that. And I um, just want to thank each and every one of you for supporting me um, on my channel. Thanks heaps, guys. I really do appreciate it. Um, secondly, I realised that I haven't done a proper fish room tour on my fish room and I'm almost up to 30 videos now. So to celebrate the 100 subscribers and um, bring it in the new decade, I thought I'd do a fish room tour uh, of my fish room, an in-depth one, show you every tank, what's in that tank, all the fish that I've got and um, yeah, I thought that, that'll be a good way to start, pretty much start the new decade, 2020. So. Um, if you've been following along on my channel for a while now, you know, um, well, in the past two weeks that I've built some new stands uh, for the new tanks that I got. So the 12 new tanks are on the stands now. If you haven't seen the way we built those stands, you can watch those videos right here. Um, or if you want to see how I acquired these tanks for free, you can also watch that video right here. Okay guys, so why don't we get a start on this fishing tour. I'm actually going to start in the middle row of this rack and um, there's a reason for that. Uh, basically because I've kind of got the fish in this order from left to right. Um, and then from that row we're going to go to the top row and then to the bottom row. And then over to the other wall behind me. And I'll tell you some um, plans that I've got for the future as well with this room. But anyway, let's get cracking and I uh, hope you really enjoyed this video. Okay guys, so here's the first tank. If you've been a subscriber to my channel for a while now, you'll probably recognize this tank as the Lamprologus Ocelatus Gold tank. So these guys have got three adults in here. You can see the male coming around the middle big rock there. There's a female at the front and a female at the back. And those two females are separated by that rock in the middle there. And the male, you can see here, he keeps the two girls um, from fighting because the two females do fight quite a bit and he breaks up their fights so he maintains his girls he's got one at the front here and another at the back and these guys are quite good spawners at the moment um, they have been for a while um, for the past year I've got about a hundred fry at the moment and they went through a period where they stopped breeding and he was bashing up one female and then he you know make peace with her and then he was bashing up the other female and um, they weren't spawning for a little while there for about two three months but they've started off again you could probably see all the fry darting around there's about there's two generations in here they had uh, two lots of fry in quick succession um, all this female did here at the front and the female at the back there has had another batch of fry as well so um, She's got some very small fry at the moment. You can see these guys kind of uh, jostling each other about. Uh, just some playful uh, flirting in the, in the Lamprologus ocellatus world. That's what it looks like. Uh, you can see when they um, are interacting like that, they get that darkish horizontal bar down the length of their body. And um, that's the female kind of enticing the male into her shell or probably even uh, trying to get him away from her shells and her fry. Okay, so the next tank looks a little bit dirtier, so excuse the, the gravel for being dirty, but there's a reason for that. And I'll get to that in a second, but this is my Lamprologus, oh sorry, Neolamprologus Brevis tank. So some more shellies. You can see the male there in the center of the frame. And he's got a female at the front here. She's always kind of near the mouth of that shell. And there's another female in the shell at the back there. You can kind of see it sitting on that shell. Now the reason the gravel in this tank looks a bit dirty, well there's two reasons. One, these guys don't dig anywhere near as, as, as much as the Lamprologus ocellatus in the previous tank you saw. And two, there are fry in this tank. And there is no way I am going to sift through this gravel potentially suck up fry. They are so hard to see on this gravel. They're really well camouflaged. You can see there's one there in the middle of the frame, but you don't notice them unless they move. There is fry everywhere in this tank. Um, there's probably about five or six fry just in this section of tank alone, and I can't see them unless they move. So 
That's why this gravel looks a little bit dirty. Uh, I'd love to clean it, but there's no way I'm gonna vacuum, uh, vacuum that gravel. Uh, so these guys, he breeds with both females, um, but he really only breeds, he mainly breeds with the female at the front here that you see at the entrance of her shell. And they sleep in that shell together. It's pretty cute to watch. Um, if I scare them by mistake, they both dart into that shell um, together and they stay in there until the coast is clear. The female at the back there, he kind of, he kind of fights with her occasionally, uh, but it also breeds with her as well. So um, yeah, he's got his little harem in here. And yeah, they're doing really well. I've got their fry in another grow out tank as well, which I'll show you soon. And um, the, guy, the fry that I've got in this tank will be moved out in about a week. Um, I've found that the male kind of does act aggressively towards them uh, once, they're getting, once they get to a certain size. Uh, but I'm not too sure if that's with just this male or with all Lamprologus, uh, Neolamprologus brevis. So it, it, it might be just a trait with my male because I have heard people having Neolamprologus brevis in their tanks in like a you know in a massive colony and they don't they don't eat their young. But this this male here that you see on the left there, he kind of has a go at, at the babies. I've never seen him actually eat eat them, but he does act aggressively towards them. And pretty much the moment those fry are free swimming, I've noticed the parents kicking those fry out, and uh, they don't they don't interact with their parents anymore. So it's another reason why I like to get those fry out and not leave them in the tank. The next tank is my Judochromus Regani tank. Now, it's hard to get them all in view because there is a pair in here now. And there's six in here, all up. And the pair have now kept the four that are subdominant to the front of the tank. So you can see in the middle there, that's the female, Regani. Beautiful little fish. These uh, Judochromus grow quite large. I believe they're the largest Judochromus species. Uh, that, oh, for like, you know, Dickfeldi, Gombe, Elnatus. Um, the the Reganis are the largest, they grow the largest, and it's actually the female that grows the largest out of the pair. So that's the, that's the dominant female in this tank. And the dominant male is at the back there. He's going back to the cave. Now, for their size, they're still pretty small uh, compared to adult Reganis. Reganis can go up to, I think about six inches. And um, these guys are just pushing two. So they're still quite juvenile. However, I noticed that they had fry in this tank two days ago. So I'm really surprised that they've spawned at such a young age. That said, when they're adults, they can have oh, probably over a hundred fry in one spawn. Um, but these guys, from what I saw, one fry <laughs> for their first time. So uh, yeah, it was really, really uh, chuffed to see even that they had um, one fry just that they, that they spawned. So I know I've got a pair in here and um, they will go into their own tank um, eventually because a two foot cube for these guys is probably a bit big. However, they do grow, they are the largest of all the Judochromus, so maybe I will keep them in here um, and move the other four out to give these parents some room uh, to grow and so they're not as stressed. In saying that though, you don't want to have the female or the male acting, taking out all the aggression on each other. So it is sometimes best to keep some in here just as did the fish so the aggression is spread amongst all the inhabitants of the tank. Um, Reganis, their, their bond can break fairly easily, even just moving a pair from one tank to another or moving some rocks around to take fry out. But I like this little tank. Um, there's not a lot of rocks in here. There probably should be a bit more for these types of guys. But uh, they're doing quite well and are, are growing out. So guys, I hope you enjoyed the first part of my fishing tour. I didn't realize when I started recording this how long it's gonna take me to go through all the tanks in the fish room. So I'm gonna break this video up into um, a couple videos over the next few weeks. So they will all be released in consecutive weeks, but um, I don't wanna make each video too long. So if you like that video, please hit the like button, comment and subscribe, it really help me out and I really appreciate it. All right guys, I'm gonna wrap this one up now. Thanks heaps for watching and I'll catch you in part two next week. See yous.